future, talk radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life from Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at UBNRadio.com. <laughs> oh boy, that's loaded. Hey everybody, welcome. Thanks for tuning in. You're here with Deborah Zara Cobalt and Linda Hayes. Welcome to our show. And we are so glad you're here. It has been such a great week. What a great week. Starting right? with last week yep. at the Republican presidential debate. It was, it was so, exciting. so fun. And ever since then, I have been obsessed with watching the candidates, seeing what's going on, seeing who's pulling out, seeing who's not. Right. Watching the numbers. Um, I should just be a strategist. I mean, at the rate I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> You're well informed. You know, being at the debate is it makes you realize the patriotism. I know that's maybe a stretch for some, but ju it really was special. You know, maybe because it was at the li the Reagan Library. It was red, white, and blue, and yeah, it was just really made me excited about the next president. Well, the setting there was beautiful. I don't care if you're yeah. a Republican or Democrat, right. because I am always very clear. I go right down the center. I vote for the guy or the girl. I have never been one to vote yeah. either way. I mean, to vote just one way. Right. So I always like to preface that so people don't think, oh, you just like it because of that. But I think that is, it was a fantastic setting. I thought that they handled it quite well. A lot of people thought that some of the candidates didn't get much of a word in. But it was designed. That's the way it goes. That is the you way it goes. You gotta be a loud mouth. I mean, you do. You <laughs> <laughs> no wonder why I get so much air time. Oh and my gosh, that makes sense. Speaking of that, yeah. I you rocked the house because Deborah is such a good journalist. I don't know. I have to pat you on the back because at the end, we're all in the spin room trying to get sound bites and meet everybody's the just sort of walking around. Right. right. It's kind of crazy. And I'm small. So I just was watching from above. And there goes Deborah, man. She's in there. <laughs> She's in the crowd. And what does she do? She gets Trump. She follows the sun. And we should roll. I want everyone at home to see what it's like when you're well, in that spin right room. In, there's a spin room right yeah, there. Yeah, there's it's all really the people. That we're, right, we're above the spin room. The entire station was, we were up there. Oh, there's Anderson Cooper. And the spin room is where everyone sort of gathers after, after it the is debate. that they're doing. Yeah. And then all the reporters gravitate toward And it was funny. People. They hold up the, the sign of signs. the candidate, you know. the And it's fun from that vantage point where we were yeah, to watch what really was cool. going on. Right. right? Um, and then she, Deborah couldn't hold back. She's like, I'm going down. Well, I'm going down there. A bunch of us were right? going down there, but I didn't <laughs> just want to stand there and wait. I wanted to do something else. So... To be yeah. perfectly honest, and this is just the way I roll, I had to use the restroom. So <laughs> because I had to use the, I'm going to be honest, I, because I had to use the restroom, I ended up in the very, coming back into the room, in the very front. Can you almost see the uh, one of the pictures where I was right in the front of all the journalists? And I thought, oh, That's good positioning. Yeah. So in comes Trump, and I'm like, Oh, well, great spot. Why not? It was just kind of dumb luck. And then when you're in a spot like that, that's where, okay, the, the one on the right is where you could see where I just walked in the room and I thought, oops, I'm just going to stand here. Oops. So uh, yeah. um, <laughs> it right. wasn't really quite done by design. The one where you could see he was further back, that's when I was a little further right. back from him. And then I needed to use the restroom. And that's where it goes. Do you have the video of her racing after, running, trying to get the sound bite? Oh, there's his son. Because uh, this is really good. I, this is like you're almost there with you. I want people to know what it's like to be a reporter. I mean, it's you have to have some balls. You do. Two question. How yeah. do you think your dad did? He did amazing. Yeah. Very, very proud of him. Yeah, he did amazing. Bet. Is it going to be having you guys out on the campaign trail more? We're, we're having a lot of fun. <laughs> we're having a lot of fun. We've got a great company to run as well, but we're having a great time. Thanks. Yeah, you know, he he seems like a nice kid. He they're they are well raised. They are yeah. decent kids. Ivanka was right either behind me or right by side mm -hmm. of me. Now I'm a tall girl. I'm five nine in my flats. She was so tall, gorgeous, absolutely stunning. And when she I turned, is pretty. Oh, she's stunning. But these are smart kids. Yeah, they are. I mean, they are not um I mean they've done a decent job with these kids. He was a nice guy. I mean, he was friendly, he wasn't standoffish. And then there was another point when we kept walking. There it is, right there. Where I this is where you really you get a feel for what it's like, right? Yeah. 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 
Go straight home. Go straight Donald, home. what's your first order of business? I'm going straight home. I thought that was pretty funny. You have, you do. You have to scream over Dude. these people. But it's amazing I how... I love your little voice. <laughs> Donald, Donald, what's the order of business? Well, it's funny how your reporter's instincts just kick in. Yeah, you do. It's but that a, happens all the time. Yeah. When I Because I'm generally kind of a friendly, fun, yeah. really kind of outgoing, but quiet person but the fact that in he terms answered of running you, after people. I mean, people might be like, oh, he just said I'm going home. But that's funny to me because, you know, everyone was screaming out things to him. And then well, Deborah says, what's your next order of business? Well, what's your first order and of business? Answers. In other words, when you become president, yeah. what's the first thing you're going to do? Are you going to go to McDonald's? I mean, what are you going to do? Yeah. So the guy wanted to go home. Well, he was um, tired. He said, you three hours of <laughs> standing up. Uh, and then um, I just followed him out to his car. Yeah. I was not, the doors closed, and a couple of us just kept walking with him. And I think he ended up at the car with Rick Santorum. Is that right? Okay, this video is off to the side, so you're just yeah. You have to it. crank your head sideways. <laughs> Take good care of him. Media is not supposed to be out here, people. He's used to it. <laughs> I'm just like. <laughs> He's, He's used, used to it. it. He loves it. He lives off of it. He loves it, but I get it because that was sort of a personal moment where yeah. we're going into the car. But, you know, I just kept walking with these people. Fair game, you know, until you're in that car game. with the and tinted I windows. And I would have gone in goes. if I could have. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't put it past you, Deborah. Yeah, but it was, it was so much fun. A whole yeah. bunch of us were there. And we just had a terrific time. Um, Brings back memories, doesn't it, of the b good old days of CNN and when we were there on the front lines. I mean, we were right there. It was well, no it was time. interesting. It's almost like no time had passed. When you work for a national network, I remember covering that for CNN. And I remember at one point uh, we were in Ireland, actually, because we quickly took a vacation. And I sat down in the hotel room and I turned on the TV. Boom. On came CNN and one of our pieces, my yeah. pieces. And I thought, oh, wow. And it dawned yeah. on me that's the impact that a station like that can have because you can be anywhere and someone will see your story. Oh, I, I had someone say, I saw a piece you did and the guy was in Beijing. That's really cool. Yeah. You know, really... so those were good old days. And now, he... now, of course, you could see it on the internet, which is fantastic. Right. Podcasting, change, yeah. amazing. Which um, is what we're doing now. Exactly. So the voice continues, you know, but it was a, it was such an amazing time. Um, and it was so fun reporting with you and the other... Um, yeah. The other hosts on the station, too. It was, it was a great It was time. a lot of fun. Uh, so we've been following the polls. Uh, Carly Fiorina kind of inched her way up. So to second, right? Second. I, I don't know where it stands. I mean, he Trump dropped a little. He was on the news the other day with NBC. I was laughing my head off. He said, why are you reporting a CNN poll when I'm talking to NBC? Your poll made me, b I had higher ratings in your poll. Why are you talking about CNN? Which I thought was a good point. That's a clever point. Yeah. I, um, I, I, was, I was, you know, why are they talking about the CNN poll when it was a C an NBC interview? Well, as people drop out one by yeah. one, I wonder where those votes are going to go. Because a lot of them may then go to the base, which would be right. a Bush or, you know, someone that a, a lot of Republicans might instead right. gravitate toward. I think he's opened up the field and he's made it so interesting just for people who say, I'm sick of the base, I'm sick of the old way. Right. Um, I know this guy's arrogant, but he's, he's refreshing. He's got right. something to say that's different than the guys who have been paid off for all these years. It's so, nice to hear someone yeah. not be politically correct, quite frankly. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. It is a little off-putting to me, but, uh, but... I think it's funny. I know. A lot of people think it's funny. I, 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 I think, think it's, it's a little rude to go well, after a rude. woman, actually, and uh, what he said about Rosie O'Donnell re uh, bothered me from the day he did it. But you know, <laughs> you know, in the business, you have to deflect as a woman. Yeah, you have to deflect point. and you have to bring humor into it. If you don't do that, and I don't feel like Carly Fiorina did. Oof. If you don't do that, you're just looked at as like the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> 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 she did not resonate. I, not for me. me either. And I want to stand behind. I really want to stand behind a woman. But it has to be the right woman. It has to be the right woman. But sh for me, she right. was not it. I'll give me her neither. another chance or two or three. But. She first do it first impressions are, I was hoping for the good first impression. I did not get it. Yeah, so. but I, I stand in the minority because, and so do you, because yeah, know. We're most people really thought she did great. I thought she was Should we, angry, and yeah, I'm not I, interested angry. in angry. Not either. You can't be angry. You got to get over it and move on and look at the positive. You so. know, Michael Reagan, remember, we had an hour with him yeah, in studio. I, he, we were the only show and station where he would sit down for an hour and give us an entire hour of his time. He was talking about his father. I don't even know if we have a clip of that, if we pulled it. but We, um, should, we should bring we'll that back that. After, We'll go to that later, maybe. maybe. we want to bring up Andy. Andy. Yeah, we'll bring up Andy, Andy. But I just want to say one thing about Michael Reagan. He, um, he predicted that the good doctor would fall by the wayside. He was right about that. 
But he really didn't. I think the good doctor did not fall by well, the way. Well, he was second, and now Carly's moving up, yeah. taking his spot. But he thought he'd be out, and instead it ended up Walker. So um, interesting to watch. Yeah, right? lots of lots to talk about in the next year or two, whatever how long it goes on. So who's coming on next, Linda? We have, uh, this is special to me. Yes, it is. Andy Oak, like a tree. Andy was recently recently at the president. Rutherford B. Hayes Library and Museum. And may is, I say? Yes, you can say. As he said, it's Linda's, the, the house of Linda's ancestors, right. if you will. It's your family. By name. Jim Hayes, uh, your, my your... husband's family, direct descendant. Of Rutherford yeah. B. Hayes. And uh, great, my kids are the great, great grand ch children of Rutherford B. Hayes. I mean, it's a direct descendant. I think that's Comes so right from cool. the oldest son, which is cool. It's something to be proud of. Oh, my gosh. Um, so, I mean, Andy... Andy was there, right? Yes. He was talking about first ladies. We're like, this is so great because we're in election time and it's a little soon to talk about first ladies or first husbands. But it's time to look back at what influences first ladies had in our past. And so interesting, right? So really you, he's, you're a producer over at C-SPAN, C -SPAN. right? And you gave a talk on first ladies at Linda's house, the Hayes, Clay, <laughs> the Hayes Library. House. Is that correct? Yes, yes, Linda. Thank you for letting me visit your uh, your ancestors' house. It's a beautiful house in Fremont, Ohio. And it's the staff the there is fantastic. Aren't the, didn't you love the staff there? They're well, just like down to earth, wonderful people. I they like work that. very hard. They're, they're, they work very hard. They're wonderful people. And and when I was out there for the C-SPAN series, actually, they were doing a lot of renovations. So I got to see a lot of things I didn't see in the first time around. After my speech, they gave me a private tour of the house. Uh, we just kind of. Yeah, the house. And at all the they wanted it. Stuff. it it's beautiful. Right. They wanted to bring it back to when Rutherford B. Hayes lived there. So they put, I don't know, a million dollars into it. Now, the family lived there, and then it went to the state. So the house was done up when the family lived there. Is so that the it library? Was very interesting. The house is now the Rutherford B. No, there's two, no, there's there's two places. Two, two yeah. different okay. buildings. Yeah, the, ha the house actually, Rutherford, Lucy, Lucy Hayes, the there first she lady, is, former first there. lady. She's she a cutie. Look at that. Rutherford B. Hayes. Look at that scoop and, neck and she's Rutherford wearing. lives there for a long time afterwards. Right. And they have their own, um, what I like, and this is kind of morbid, but I like going to the graveyard. Did you ever go there, Andy, when you were in the neighborhood? Oh, <laughs> I, I visit I visit every first couple before I go and speak at their facility just to kind of say hello. Oh, that's so sweet. That's interesting. But this yeah. this graveyard has all the descendants, everything right there. And it's interesting. Well, does that mean, does that mean say, wait a minute. Does that mean real quickly about for you? where you guys were? Because because Ronnie is there at the Reagan Library and, and Nancy Reagan will be there eventually, but that was not the initial site, that beautiful, mm. beautiful mountaintop library. Reagan initially wanted to have his library closer down to Stanford University, but the Hoovers were already there, oh. and they didn't want to have two <laughs> they didn't Republican want to share. presidents. Right. So, well, and they didn't want a Republican and a Republican. Maybe if Ronnie had been a Democrat, they would have been more open to it, but mm. a friend of the Reagan took him up on this mountain and showed him this piece of land oh. and said, this might be where you want to be. And Ronnie and Nancy were like, there's no other place. It's one of the most beautiful, it is. federally it is run so libraries in, in, the, in the whole fleet. And you you really like Nancy Reagan. I, I mean, I guess we could, we'll, we'll go back kind of in time, but, you know, we're talking about first ladies, and you said she's one of the funniest first ladies, right? Nancy Reagan. She, she is. Yeah, she, she, she doesn't. You know, it's it's Washington D.C. This will probably shock all of your listeners and and you <laughs> too as well. But Washington D.C. is very fickle. Washington D.C. What's what? good for one first true? lady is not good for another first lady. I know this is breaking <laughs> news, but you know some some first ladies don't dress nicely enough or don't buy enough new stuff, and some lady first ladies dress too nicely or buy too much nice right. stuff. Right, she was and criticized Reagan, all the time. She really was. She. She really got she really got uh, some some criticism for wearing dresses that were too expensive and being too Hollywood and being too fancy, and um, she doesn't let this bother her. And she even shows up at a regular gridiron uh, black and black tied dinner, dressed up in basically a clown suit. I mean, she puts on this <laughs> mismatch of like rubber boots and big stars and hats and funny glasses and the whole thing and comes on and recites this this speech that she's changed the words to a famous poem where she 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 basically makes fun of herself. And I she, love that. She uses, yeah. It's great. It's great because, you know, you really, you just, you know, in certain, first ladies are very unique in that they're not elected, they're not paid, 
They are merely married to the person that is in the White House. Now, this will eventually, I, I would hope, I would think, it's actually kind of shocking that it hasn't happened yet, that there will be a first gentleman. I know. sooner than, than we think. Um, and, and, the, and we will not have elected him. But he will just be the husband of the woman who becomes president. And that's sort of the, the kind of gist of, of my part in this C-SPAN series, was that I wanted to get to know the women that were the girls, that were the girlfriends, that were the young women, and the, the young girlfriends. mothers, the people that <laughs> dated the man that would be president, you know, and, and then go on to be widowers and grandmothers and things like that. We, the, the limited bit we know about these women as a whole is what they did while they were in the White House. Right. So, you know, expanding and, and showing these women as real people, you know, people that laugh and cry and love and lose and celebrate. And, you know, there's just, it, it's, it's a real, it, the, the journey was so amazing studying every first lady from Martha Washington to Michelle Obama that I really, you know, with, with reading letters and I, I mean, gosh, I, I've, I've seen Lady Bird Johnson's swimsuits hanging up in her walk-in closet at the ranch in, in Texas. I mean, How does I that look like? where people have brought <laughs> in. It's just, it's amazing, and I feel very close to all these You women. You have all these little interesting tidbits that we don't – What throw out a couple that, about the First Ladies that we wouldn't have known about. Maybe the best cook. I, I mean, I don't know what you, you've sure, discovered sure, in your sure. search. The, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's interesting. You know, there's, there's, there's a handful of First Ladies, I think, that, that everyone can name. You know, you right. go off the top, you know, the, obviously the ones that are living, Hillary Clinton, you know, Nancy Reagan, and Jacqueline Kennedy, Eleanor Roosevelt, Martha Washington. But there's so many in between. I would even say, Linda, that, that your relation, Lucy Hayes, she's one of the most influential First Ladies that people will not name if they're naming 20 First Ladies. And, and here's why. why. I want to know. She's the first First Lady to graduate from college. She's, she's the first first lady with a college degree. She's kind of cute. Lucy Hayes does things before it's cool. Lucy yeah. Hayes yeah. is a pioneer of, of philanthropy. It's like and daughter. You know what? Like she's known for in the media as Lemonade Lucy, and that's not really fair. Yeah, I mean, she did a dry White House, even which kind of a, doesn't really yeah. fit in my family. <laughs> I'm not going to well, deal and, too and much, but it's very opposite. Okay, let's did just, a dry White House. Dry White House. Name. So yeah, I love the name, well, Lemonade not, Lucy. That's it was funny. not completely dry. Oh, not completely ooh, dry. Okay. They served wine. All right, that's all right. It was then. just that Lucy did away with the whiskey punches and some of the heavy stuff that people were just the hard getting loaded alcohol. on, and she wasn't the she first. She was sick of it. She wasn't the only. I like her. Well, you Cleveland know what? She probably was not a drinker. She probably didn't want people stumbling around breaking. Well, her she stuff. probably it just it, it doesn't look good. It's not classy, you know, to be drunk and falling all over well, in the was, White House. <laughs> there was also the case that, that the, you know, after the Civil War and, and all that kind of stuff sort of settled down and people were kind of settling into this new world, uh, the Grant White House was very raucous. There were a lot of and that was card the one games before. and a lot of cigar smoking and a lot of hard liquor. And Lucy had taken a vow of temperance long before she met Rutherford for religious purposes. Mm -hmm. But she didn't. I like her because she didn't force it on anyone else. Right. It's, you know, they say in Washington, you're doing the right thing if, if both sides don't like you. You know, <laughs> yeah. if, if, you if, divide if, the middle. The, the right thing is in the middle. You know, mm -hmm. if, if the Democrats think you're too conservative and the conservatives think you're too liberal, then you're probably on the right track. You, you've hit somewhere in the middle. And Lucy didn't drink herself, but she went to events where alcohol was served. So the women's Christian temperance movement was very upset with her. And they're the ones that paid for her, her White House portrait. But they were upset because she attended. <laughs> Riverboat uh, uh, functions where there was where there was alcohol and drinking, and they're like, and Lucy's response was, "I said I wasn't going to drink. I didn't say other people could. You could do drink. what you and, want, right? You yeah. know, it, there, <laughs> there, a lot of people say that Lincoln's next thing he was going to tackle was alcohol abuse because it was so rampant and creating such unproductivity in the uh, in the United States that it was a real problem." Sarah Polk had a dry White House. She served wine as well, but she did away with the liquor, the rum punches and, and the whiskey punches because she was in Washington and was at one of her husband's card games one night when James Polk was Speaker of the House and saw a bunch of guys get loaded and get loose at the lips and start talking out of school and saying things that she <laughs> Oops. She pulled James aside and said, hey, this, this is not going to fly for us. We're smarter than this. You're not going to get loaded. We're not going to have all these rockets. But the Polk served like 
17 course meals that people that lasted all day and people talked about throughout but she didn't get a nickname like lemonade sarah i think it's just one of those it's those (laughs) Those things points in times in history but even beyond that everyone in dc loved her yeah Uh, she was liked well like throw parties and and have people say that you've got a fantastic party (laughs) and you didn't get people drunk well man you're quite a hostess (laughs) okay i'm gonna throw a couple words out at you and then just name the first lady Who's sort of the nuttiest, the craziest, the looniest? Oh boy! Yeah, I mean, you know, the e- the, e- the easy answer is there. Mary is Mary Lincoln because she's the only one that was institutionalized. But that's too bad. You, you never know, know why a woman was institutionalized, though. I mean, honest, especially back in the day. Maybe they wanted to shut her up. I mean, well, the the other thing is a lot of heartbreak she was, back then. She was, yes, she had she had a rough life as oh. as many of them did. I mean. You know, the, the children that the Washingtons raised in the White House are not George and Martha's Washington. They're the grandson and gr- they're the grandchildren of Martha Washington's kids from her first marriage that all died. It's all true. of Martha Washington's kids with her first husband were dead by the time they were in their early 20s. People, and people so, don't realize that. That's harsh. That's hard. How do you get over I know. It? And then how are you just sort of rise yeah, above it and just about be sort of life. okay and smile? and Jane. Jane Jane Pierce's last child, last remaining of three, was basically decapitated in front of her and the president in a train oh. accident on the way back to their house to pack up to come to Washington to be inaugurated into a presidency that Jane Pierce wanted no part of. Oh. This stuff's all over the place. Oh. I mean, it's crazy how people died all the way up to, I mean, you know, uh, the Wilson, uh, President Wilson had two wives because his first wife died in the White House. She's the second first lady to die in the White House. The first is Tyler's first wife, Letitia. Yeah, but we're getting a little great. bit off track. Yeah, so, so, so with Mary with Mary Lincoln, there are actually, this is amazing because you think, Abraham Lincoln, what else can we know about him? What else is there to learn? What else? We but there was a safe that was opened up recently that belonged to his, his longest and last remaining son, Robert Lincoln, who was the congressman, who, right. is, who gets a real bad rap for institutionalizing his mother. Well, there are papers in there that show that he was just, he was trying to protect her by any means necessary. Hmm. She was having hallucinations. She was self-medicating. She was medicating improperly, not, not, not to her own, uh, uh, on her own accord, but, you know, doctors were, giving, were over-medicating her because that's just what they did in those days. And people that were hysterical, they just subdued them medically. Hmm. And so it's she really was found sad. walking the streets hmm. of Chicago in her undergarments, saying mm-hmm. that her house was on fire, that her apartment was on fire. Mm-hmm. Well, a psychologist called Robert Lincoln and said, when people hallucinate that their house is on fire, they jump out of windows. Mary Lincoln lived on like the 6th, 7th, 8th, 10th floor, something like that. Mm-hmm. So he thought his mother was going to have hallucinations and jump out the window and kill herself, thinking wow. she was getting away from this fire that didn't exist. Mm-hmm. He institutionalized her. She got off some medication. She calmed down and was released six months later and lived a you know relatively happy life for Mary Lincoln with her sister back home in, in Lexington, Kentucky. So I mean, yeah, you know what? what she did the was right she thing. Crazy? You know? Was she nutty? Sure, but there's there's reasons behind it. Right, right. She was going through a tough time. Who knows? You know, we saw so much of uh, Jackie O because that was at the time when television was for the first New. time everywhere. Right. And Absolutely. from from then on, you know, we we knew so much about Ford and the troubles that she went through. So it's almost the more modern generations, because of television, know so much about the first ladies. But who do you think had an impact before TV? You know, that would have had an even greater greater one if media was such a big deal. Do you know what I mean? Well, I there's 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 two women that come to mind, and one Lucy Hayes, and I'm not saying that just because yeah. I'm on with Linda. I, Good old Lucy. I, no, I'm not. <laughs> I, say, I read listen, up on her. She's a cutie. Speech, I, She's cute. At, at every speech I go to, whether I'm talking at the Grant House or the I'm Eisenhower so- Library or wherever, I think Lucy Hayes is one of the most instrumental first ladies. She's transitional. She is transition. She is she is transformative, not transitional. I love she that. She takes the role. And because she's already out there, she's the eyes and ears for her husband when he's the governor of Ohio. She's going to mental institutions and uh, orphanages and hospitals and going back and telling Rutherford, like, hey, things aren't right here. You need to step in and do something. And she did that when she got to the White House. The same deal. 
huge advocate for veterans. The stories go like on that. forever yeah. about Lucy Hayes. But you know what's did. nice is he and listened to her. I mean, he did listen to her. I was just going to say so he listened cool. to her because some of them didn't have Absolutely. that kind of relationship. And they were they, I think they really but, were in love. Like they, were, they had a good relationship when you read some sure. of their love letters. So that's kind Lucy of nice. Lucy paved the way for women like Eleanor Roosevelt. Mm. And Eleanor Roosevelt, I mean, if for no other reason that she's the longest sitting first lady at 12 years in right. that position, is one of the most influential first ladies. But she did that for her husband because her husband was in a wheelchair. Right. And she was motivated to do that for a number of different reasons. But if women hadn't come along and done non-traditional roles like Lucy Hayes before her, then Eleanor Roosevelt doesn't exist, or maybe doesn't exist in the same way, or doesn't have that That's sort of, you know, mindset. It's or true. you know, It's a domino effect. Lucy does it so someone else can do it, so someone else can do it, so Eleanor. So I'm not saying that Lucy Hayes was a direct uh, right. influence of, of Eleanor Roosevelt, but if Lucy hadn't been Lucy, Eleanor couldn't be Lu Eleanor. It'd be a different thing. Let's... The other first lady who gets the, the, the least amount of press who probably did the most nice things that any first lady's ever done is Lou Hoover. And they just were at the wrong place at the wrong time in the middle of the Great Depression. She was pretty, They had too. come along at a different time with a oh, different set beautiful. of media and public relations. Lou Hoover would be, we, we'd be, we'd Look have Lou great Hoover dress. day. So yeah, wonderful. no one talks about that her. Great what, what, what was so special about her? She was striking to me. I think she's beautiful. Yeah. Maybe it's that photo we're looking she's at. She's a you remarkable woman. It. First of all, Lou is not a nickname. Lou is her given name. It's her given her father name? wanted a boy ah. <laughs> and didn't get one and named her Lou. That happened and a lot a back in the day. Yeah. He's a banker that moved from, from, um, from Iowa out to California, mm -hmm. and she was uh, toting guns and riding horses yeah. and going out into the I desert and doing non-girl like stuff. From the She's beginning. like me. She's You're right. She's the first woman. <laughs> To graduate from Stanford University with a geology Ooh. degree, most likely the first woman to graduate in the country with a geology degree. And that's where she meets Hoover. So, long oh. story short, she and Hoover go around the world. They're the first of only two administrations not to take a uh, salary because they were multimillionaires. They're sitting at their summer home in the Shenandoah Valley in Virginia, and a student walks, uh, I'm, not, I'm sorry, a child, a child walks into camp to give the president a birthday present. You're there, there on his birthday. Mm -hmm. So what, what, the, what ends up happening is Lou Hoover discovers there's no school in the Shenandoah Valley for these mountain children. Oh, so wow. with her own money and no publicity and no newspaper articles or nothing crazy about it, she pays to build a school. She pays the teacher's salary of that school. That's what I and like. And some of the children that have the aptitude to go on to college, she pays for their college education. When Lou Hoover dies... In her private desk, in her study, they find a box full of checks that were uncashed. They were from some of the students that were trying to pay Lou Hoover back oh, wow. for the college education she provided, and Lou didn't cash a single check. That's one of that is so. I she's my, she's my new favorite way. because I yeah. find that to be very appealing in a person, and I love that she doesn't have any narcissism. Like well, back then, they didn't. Very appealing to me, where it's right. not about you; it's right. about the work you're doing, and you don't brag about it. No, no one even knew about it until you brought it up, Andy. Absolutely, I, I did not that. know that. Yeah. That's a beautiful story. Um, I'm just going to talk to my board up for a second. Can our next holder or caller just kind of hang on for a little bit? Just, There's so okay, much. Cool. You know, this is so fascinating. But wait, wait a minute. I want to get to the present day uh, First Lady quickly because we're running out of a little time. And who sure. do you think would be a great First Lady? Or a husband. Or, or a first husband. I mean, come on. We all know about Bill. Man, would I love to see that, right? I That'd mean, be crazy. It, it would be crazy. <laughs> more, more, more shoe throwing and all that kind of stuff. I know somebody who worked during that administration. I know someone. In fact, my closest friend we've had him on the the show quite a few times was a cnn correspondent uh under obama mm -hmm. oh lord he's told me all kinds of stuff that i can't reveal at all but i'm just saying <laughs> um so i know a little bit there but the new ones coming up who do you think would be an interesting one who would make an impact or the men i don't know well, there's, any, yeah, yeah there's a number there's a number of different the big thing on every everyone's mind is what do we call, and I get this at every speech, are you going to be the first lady's gentleman's man's man? The first lady man man? Or what's going to, I'm always going to be the first lady's man. I mean, that's just who I am. That's, that's your what title. I do. Right. Wait, that's but, what you call him? That's what his title. Exactly. So yeah, they go to my so, website, firstladiesman.com. So they Everything's can't take there. that. They can't take book. it. Everything's coming out. No, but, what? but what do you think of the present day candidates that are up there? What do you think of their wives? Like yeah, Trump's well, wife. She's gorgeous. I, if, she's if beautiful. I'm, if I'm, she doesn't speak that uh, much. Uh, who? I'm sorry? 
Trump's wife, for example, she doesn't speak much. She's beautiful. Melania, I think, is yeah, her Melania, name. She's right. lovely. Beautiful. Um, well, I think she's now, elegant. There, there is a possibility. Oh, there God. She's not just beautiful. Holy. Good Lord. <laughs> I want that dress. <laughs> Go ahead, There's sir. multiple possibilities within this election. Trump and, um, and uh, uh, Jeb Bush, uh, that we could have the second non-American-born first lady. The right. first... That's non-American born first lady is Louisa Catherine Adams. She's actually born in London. Hmm. So that in itself would be unusual. If we go to the, the first gentleman question, I mean, if, if, you know, if, if, uh, I, I'm a huge 24 fan, the series with, uh, Jack Bauer, Keeper Sutherland, you know, yeah. and they had a female president. So she was Madam President. It's most likely that that's what she will be called. You know, it, it just makes sense. Madam President. And then it President. would then be the first. The, yeah, so it would be Madam President and the first gentleman. It, it seems to make I sense. Like the first gentleman. Gentleman. I like the first gentleman. I like the word gentleman. Go. That's lovely. The first gentleman. You almost want to say it with a bit of but an now, accent. But now, think about, think about <laughs> this. If Hillary Clinton gets the nomination and wins, Bill Clinton is her husband. However, all past presidents are referred to as Mr. President. Mr. President. So it'd be so Mr. and have... Mrs. Mrs. and Mr. President. They'd have to dress her Mr. first. Wait, Mrs. and Mr. Presidents. Presidents? You would have mm -hmm. Madam and Mr. President. So she wouldn't be called Mrs. President. Or Madam um, President. I think people would probably say, Mrs. President, I have a question. Mrs. President. Yeah, or but Madam. when they're together, I mean, like, how do you address say... their invitation? <laughs> That's a good one. No, well, Madam exactly. and Mr. But President. If you, want to go, if you want to go with the formal title, it would be Madam and Mr. President Clinton. That's crazy. That's easy. Yeah. There you go. Uh, so that would be interesting. What about Carly's husband? I don't know very much about him at all. Carly Fiorino. Do you know anything? I, about, I don't you know, know, I don't either. So, so if, if Carly were to go on and get the nomination and win, there he she is. would then be Madam President. And he would, I would guess at this point, be the first gentleman. And he would be the first first gentleman. And he would have his own causes. Maybe he would take on um, prostate cancer for men yeah. or... You know, no shave November, or or, or <laughs> physical fitness, or you know, I mean, there's yeah. so many, and this goes this goes back again to Lucy. You know, if 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 a if a first lady or first gentleman comes into the White House and doesn't pick some kind of cause, whether it's reading with the Bushes or let's move with Michelle Obama, I mean, you know, they they're expected to do this. They are put into a philanthropic spotlight, so he's going to have to pick something. Now, here's something that, 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 that has not popped up, which I find very unusual, is that no one talks about Hillary Clinton's health. Like, we know mm -hmm. about polyps on George Bush and, oh and my. Dick Cheney and everything else that, that we don't really want to know. We know what their <laughs> physical exams are. We know yeah. when they run. We know when they exercise. No one has said anything about, you know, so, I mean... Well, we'll probably it, get to that, though. It's strange... You I know, think we will. They're already I thought we'd get to it because she had some brain brain issues and some things like that. But, you know, it's, it's always the first lady has always we've always respected for the most part. Their, their privacy in a way. Life, yeah. Mm -hmm. And well, their privacy in a way. And now when you flip the things. It's going to change. Know, any, I guess when you're the first gentleman, no one no one cares if you if you gone and, and, and had your colonoscopy regularly <laughs> or if you're jogging every day or riding a bike to stay in shape because you're not an elected official but then they then do their 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 wives become the center of a, of a of a necessary we need to know if they are physically fit for that job so that's just another interesting little twist as we flip back and forth between gender here coming up on times the times are changing right I times mean, are really changing so um i mean one more question because we do have another caller and uh, we have another guest on the line dan schner hang on if you can hear me um mm -hmm. what about i mean bush's wife is interesting uh of latino descent right. and what about her i mean i actually think she would resonate with people i do and she's always sort of in the background i never see her well, that's the first time i've ever seen likeable, a picture of her she's more likable than he is she is, but that is—I mean, cor correct me if I'm wrong. That would—that would be another example of a foreign-born first lady. Right. Correct? She's she's not American. Yeah, born. yeah. Right. Another example. So Spanish speaking, I'm not sure where she's. I'm not sure she's Cuban or where she's from. I, forgive me, I don't. But I mean, she would be. She's she's. Uh, um, you know, it, it's just it, it's it's a, it's. Teresa Hines Carey could have been that foreign-born first lady, but it's amazing to think that over all these years, mm -hmm. there's only been one, and that's back in. You know, the, the sixth administration of the United States. It's, just, <laughs> it's so far back. We've been such a cookie cutter, white, Protestant, 
president and first lady. There's only been one Catholic president and, and right, first Kennedy. lady. You know, everything has just been. You well, know, you know, I'll Protestant, tell you what. We're Christian, such a white. You know, it's. Andy, we're such we're such a new country still, you know, I mean, so, yeah, yeah, comparatively. So that's why. And as time goes on, that's going to evolve out, too. But we're going to have to we're going to have to say bye now, which yeah, is Andy, too we'll bad. Andy, we'll have you back once we know more of the next who's of the what's finalist going on. of this And then we're going to have you sort of line them up. Yeah. And then you're going to really like Absolutely. dissect Because you're super interesting, Andy. Thank oh, you you're so terrific. much. Andy, Andy Oak, right? I yeah. said that right. We can't put it on the blooper reel. Yeah, so. no, I, I appreciate <laughs> the time, ladies. And again, I just had a fantastic time out of the... The Hayes uh, president. So glad Center. you were there. At, Linda, at Linda's house. Place, Linda's house. A great house, <laughs> great staff, everything. Okay, thanks Thank a you, lot for Andy. being on. Thank you. <laughs> Woo! Oh I my gosh. That. And now he was terrific. He's, he's, uh, he's a pro. I mean, he was fantastic. He knows, and you know what? He didn't even get into like a tenth of what he knows no, about not these. even so one We just don't have time. This guy goes so deep. Now, Dan, are you on? Dan Schnur. I'm here. Hi, Dan. Oh my gosh. Thank you for waiting. I'm sorry. You know, we just, in this gentleman, uh, Andy Oak, was just at the Hayes Center and uh, talking about first ladies and, you know, from Martha all the way up to now. And he was very, very interesting. He's recently written a book. So and we only just got into, you know, some of the ladies that could be first ladies. And then, so yeah. sorry, we went a little over. So how are no, you? No, no, very, very interesting stuff. Yeah, he's a great and guy. And I will tell you, for, for what it's worth, yeah. Bill Clinton has been asked what he would think he should be called. Yeah. Uh, what his title should be if he if his if Hillary were elected president? Bill, he is suggested being known as the first laddie. <laughs> <laughs> the first laddie. The first laddie. There you go. That's kind of Scottish. I guess. I mean, just <laughs> the first gentleman is better if you want to call him a gentleman. But that so, that's uh, interesting that someone asked him that already. You know. Yeah, but well, no I mean, one's really talking about the women. I guess look, we got to stick with the we issues. We have a long first. way to go, right? A long way to go. People don't even know the platforms and issues that they have these guys stand for. So and girls, ladies. So Dan, thanks for being here. I know you were probably watching with a microscope last week. We were there. It was fascinating. It was a terrific evening. And uh, want your take on it? Boom! Right away. Just your um, your views. I don't think I've got anything to offer that your listeners probably haven't heard or read from other places because I pretty much agree with the conventional wisdom. Um, you know, This is either the eighth or the ninth time that political observers have said, oh, this is the end of Donald Trump. And I think we've learned at this point there will be no end of Donald Trump. <laughs> I, he, will, he will continue. That said, um, it does appear that the debate in general uh, and Fiorina's uh, uh, approach to dealing with him really does seem to have not only arrested, but seems to have reversed his rise in the polls. And some of that, as I said, is, is, is his exchange with Fiorina. But I think the other part is there were some pretty long, substantive, detailed policy discussions in which he, Trump, largely withdrew. There was about a 40-minute stretch at one point during the debate where he simply did not speak. I noticed that. And, and he just yeah. sort of grimaced. Yeah. Yeah, and, Exactly. And while, and while people, a lot of people, a lot of voters, are intrigued by the attitude he brings, it was telling that the conversation did get, did get more detailed, he got awfully quiet. Right. That's telling in itself what he didn't say. Well, right? he's that, got that's a the start. foreign policy part, I think, is what you're talking about. And didn't he say that he's going to have something out within the next week or two? Yeah. I mean, he's well, his, developing Well, his PR line, I don't know, I heard this the other day, is, I don't want to reveal what I'm going to do, because why would you tell the enemies? <laughs> Oh, because Which, we're know, right. working I mean, on it. Yeah. Right. So but that you know, was his you guys, spin we've on been it. talking we've been talking all year long about how Republicans in particular are really invested in the idea of an outsider candidate. And now they have three, not just Trump, but uh, Fiorina and Carson running second and third in the polls. Mm -hmm. And what may have happened after that last debate is a lot of Republicans said, you know what, I do want an outsider, but maybe not that outsider. Right. It's kind of scary, you know. Like, I was not like toe in the water. I was not, not particularly impressed with Carly Fiorina. I mm -hmm. found you, her you to were be not. No, no, either I was, was I. Not. I found her to be, and I stand alone. I went on a walk. Did with you some, watch her on the late night uh, with what she was on the late show with? Oh, I just forgot who it was. She doesn't. Sorry, raise, I know she's a smart woman. Yeah. I know quite a bit about her. I do not respect what she did uh, with Eula Packard. I do I, not. I do not either. And the way she tried to talk around it, I don't. And um, I wanted to stand behind her, and I just can't. Me too. Because I just, I just can't. I was surprised that she but did. She as well tried as to she lighten did. it up at the late night. Uh, I can't remember. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. Who it is? Well, she you was know, on her, with. You know, her, her record at Eula Packard is ultimately what. Uh, undid her candidacy when she ran Barbara against Boxer. Barbara Boxer mm -hmm. here in California There's a few no years back. And it does look, and we'll see if it works or not, it does look like she's 
prepared herself better to answer those questions mm-hmm. than, but they're she very had a few years ago, than she was a few years ago. It's very practiced um, and rehearsed, and I don't think that comes across, at least for me. You're, I don't like it. But you're right, because we've got Trump, Carly, and the good doctor, you know, still, One, two, sort, three. still sort of leading in the polls, mm-hmm. which is so interesting. So what does that say about what people are looking for? I was on a walk with two friends. They are extreme Democrats, you know, the kind where they're, you know, thumping their, oh, yeah. you know, pounding their chest saying, I'm moving out if one of them gets in. I said, well, guess what? Again, I do not vote by party, never have. I said, but guess what? My prediction, Trump's going to go all the way. And they said, that's it. I'm moving. They were so angry. It became (laughs) sort of a volatile walk. I had to to let go. But um, (laughs) I'm going to go on record saying I think he's going to take it all the way. I really do. I think people are enamored. They want to see what he's going to do. If he comes up with anything substantive in foreign policy, for example. Well, And and that's the big if. Um, so far, you know, uh, Trump has stayed very, very vague when he has talked on most policy matters. And if he sticks with that path, then I think it's going to get harder for him as voters start looking for more specific answers. I think you're right. But you're right. If he does begin to offer a more detailed policy agenda, foreign and domestic, um, then that probably is what is required for him to maintain. Otherwise, I think at a certain point, voters think you know, attitude, his, his attitude uh, is refreshing. Mm-hmm. But attitude only gets you so far until you can fill in the blanks. He's a quick study, though. He's a smart guy. He's not just a businessman. And again, I'm not necessarily for or against him. I'm just watching. Mm-hmm. But And I've, I've covered him in the past, so I know a little bit about him. And he is a quick study. And I feel like if he's prepped and he understands how the world is working, which he does as a business guy, yeah. at least from that point of view, I think that he can be brought up. And I'm curious what he would have to say, what his policies would reveal. Don't you think? Well, I think you make a good point. Until last week, he really didn't have much of an incentive to get specific because the first act was still playing pretty well. Right. Now, if voters are looking for a little bit more, uh, the question is, can and will he adjust? Right. So who's out next and where's the base going to go? Because that's the big deal. Like as, as guys start dropping out or girl, um, what's next? Yeah, we're down to 15 candidates. Ooh. At this rate, they'll be down to one by... All about 2026. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, these JV guys, they've got to go. I, I just don't get it. Look, it's for name recognition, right, Dan? They're staying in so people know well, who they are. Look, it, it's for name recognition. Some of them think that they're getting heard on a particular issue. Most of them, what else are they going to do? If you're George <laughs> Pataki, you finished being governor of New York some years ago. Um, you're making some money in the private sector. You're probably bored. Why not run for president? And what's the disincentive to, to stay in? Um, but you're Plus right. As the, as the primaries progress, I there think the go. one thing we learned from Walker and Perry is even a really big, fat, rich super PAC can't keep a candidate going if he or she is not catching attention with the voters. Yeah, yeah but um, that's when they should pull out because they're, then, they're, then they're taking away from the candidates that really do have something to say that really could go the distance. And by staying in there with 1% or less, But the Republican Party ridiculous. gets involved. When do they step in? Like, th- there's, there's a lot of negotiating going on behind the scenes. Well, who's, who's they? I don't well, know the that Republican there is a Party. Republican in the country yeah. who can turn to Mike Huckabee or to the Chris party. Christie and say, hey, hey, time to go home. Well, the party does. <laughs> They step in and I, talk to their people and say, you got to get out now. I think that goes on. I really do. I think there's a lot of politics in politics I, behind the scenes with I, the party. Yes, Miss Hayes. I do. I think so. Um, but I don't know. Dan doesn't I, agree, I can tell. Dan, your thoughts? No, I, I think uh, there, there, I agree that there's a lot of politics in politics. <laughs> and I believe that there'll be a lot of pressure on some of the bottom tier candidates to get out. But I just don't know who in the Republican Party today has that kind of influence. Yeah, maybe yeah, it's Priebus changed. is the chairman of the party. He's a very bright guy. But I don't know that he has the ability yeah. or the wherewithal to go to a candidate and say, all right, pull the plug, pal. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I think, you know, when it gets down to the wire, you What's, know, if they want a Republican in the White House, they do some maneuvering. So I, I don't know how it works and when it when they – I don't know. So that would be interesting. Well, I always well, ask – I'll, I'll, I'll offer ahead. you this. I, and, and, and I think you guys make a good point that Trump is certainly has the capacity – to become a policy wonk if he decided to be. I just don't think he's going to be. Really? You know, this is a guy who, you know, like most of us, we, you know, we, we develop learned behavior. When mm-hmm. something works for us, we keep doing it. And Donald Trump, not just over the last three months, but over the last 30 years, has developed a particular approach to politics and public engagement. And he's very confrontational, he's very blustery, and he doesn't really get down in the details. Asking him to remake himself in a couple of weeks, even for a really smart guy, 
is a tough act to pull off. It'll be curious so, to watch this. I'm going to Colorado. Mm -hmm. um, are you, are you, will you be at the debate stand, the next set of debates? I will not be. I'll be watching them on TV with, with, with the fascination. I'm going with John. You know, he's going to be uh, covering it. He's doing a show from there. So he's like, Deborah, come for the ride. So I, That's so great. I am. Well, yeah, so. We all have a great time. Oh, I'm just curious after that what's going to be happening. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm changing by the minute. Yeah, Dan, thanks for always coming on. You're sort of our go to guy, and you're so patient us with us all the time. And make and us I really look appreciate smart. it. <laughs> yeah, you make us look smart. <laughs> we like, like you, Dan. Well, it's nice to see you guys to have me. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're, you're, you're our guy. So we're just going to keep going to you until this is yeah. over in a year. So thank you. Excellent. Thanks, I'll look Dan. forward to next time. Okay, thanks again. Okay, bye, Dan. You know what? Thanks, Dan. He's so patient. I have to say... And smart. This man is very smart. Very smart. He, uh, I was talking about Late Night with Jimmy Fallon. I yeah. don't want to sound like a total moron. She was on there and singing about her dogs. You could tell they were trying to lighten her image. I know. That's a whole nother show. The Handlers. They drive mm -hmm. me crazy because... By the way, as I'm talking, do we have that clip of uh, Michael Reagan talking about his dad? Because I kind of wanted to finish with and that. that. In fact, you, you cut it for me the other day. <laughs> I, I called Kurt at home the day of the debates in the morning, and I said... You have to do this. I need these cut. He was such, such a no delightful Thank you person. So much. And he was at home cutting up. I was in my in my bedroom sitting there looking at the one hour interview that we did and just cutting it up uh, as I was going and Kurt was just doing it at home. So I know you probably know where it is and which one. So we'll end yeah, on. I have yeah, it yeah, ready for you. I want to say thank you to you. No so, problem. Um, he's the best. He is amazing. But um so, yeah, I'm just curious where everything's going to go with all this. And, you know, you should try and go with me to I know. Um, to I should Colorado. hitch a ride. Can I hitch a ride Wouldn't in the trunk? That would be fun. Yeah. <laughs> but I almost can't get enough of this. Having been there now, I just want to see it all the way through. So, yeah. Um, I, I'll tell you, Michael Reagan was a delight. Really interesting to meet him. Great personality. Well, the one thing that stuck with it, great personality. But the one thing that stuck with, I think, the two of us was... Reagan today would have been is would have been so moderate that Liberal. he would not have even mm -hmm. been popular to his own right. party, perhaps. And I don't was, know. He had such charisma. Yeah, that's true. You know, and I think that's what's why Trump. I don't know if he has charisma, but he's definitely getting people to listen, and that's half the battle. I mean, yeah, you know, to get people to listen, even if it's negative, is a good thing. But Reagan was so likable. And yeah. He was, you really believed that he... You could trust him. You he, felt you trusted like he him. had your back. You, you trusted know? him. And I and I loved his his uh, son. Michael's a wonderful guy. I know him yeah. for having uh, worked with him. John's worked with him. And he's a terrific guy. A delight. It was great of him to come in. So maybe we should end with... Yeah, uh, let's end with him. ...a soundbite of what his dad was like. And then we'll see everybody back here next, next week. week. Thanks for tuning in. If I endorse anybody, all of a sudden they take it to the bank. Ah, oh, that's the Reagan mantle you right, handed me. Run to I town. cannot give someone a Reagan mantle because there's nobody like Ronald Reagan. No. We were lucky enough to have Ronald Reagan in our lifetimes. We weren't looking for George Washington or Rutherford B. Hayes <laughs> hey, when yeah. my father ran for president <laughs> of the United States. Yeah. So what we need is we're looking for a leader.